Hi, my name is Alice Antwan. I'm a senior manager in the HR department at Cisco, focusing on skills, talent and learning innovation. What, what would I tell my 16 year old self if I have to think about that today? I think there are two key uh, principles that I would uh, convey back. One is to think of learning as a lifestyle. So if we think about it, many people still assume that the first part of your life would be going to school, then you go into the workplace, you work until you're 65, uh, and then you'll retire. Unfortunately, this model will no longer work. So if we take an example, so between 1900 and 2000 in the US, the life expectancy for males increased by 60%. Uh, and it increased by 63% for women. So what we're going to see is that in the not too distant future, people are going to be living to 100 years and more. So with that, with an extended life expectancy, it's not going to be possible to retire at the age of 65, simply because we're not going to have enough retirement savings to be able to sustain us in those older years. So what, what we're seeing, especially in, in the workplace, is that people of all ages need to continuously reskill and upskill uh, to, to remain relevant in today's business environment. So by thinking of learning as a lifestyle, we need to think of it as an environment where learning becomes part of everyday work, where learning is more than just compliance or required training. So learning needs to evolve from classroom training um, at you know, career inflection points to more of an ongoing continuous learning while doing. Uh, and this is supplemented by a wide variety of curated content, uh, which you will be uh, most likely familiar with videos, blogs, uh, books, online learning. So today's uh, constantly evolving business environment learning has become a key commodity for employees. So what I'd like to encourage you to do is to think about your transition as you transition to higher education and look for uh, work experience opportunities. Think carefully about the companies you'd like to work for uh, and, and make sure you understand how they will help and support you to continue to learn. The second thing I'd encourage you to do differently is, is to think about your strengths and your weaknesses. So let's think about a strength as something that energizes you, something that leaves you feeling fulfilled, powerful, restored. Um, and think of a weakness as, as something that leaves you feeling drained. So it's not necessarily that you're, you're not good at it. Uh, for example, if, if I, take Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. It may be something that I'm really good at, but if it's not something that I enjoy doing and I keep putting it off until, you know, the last possible moment each time, then I'd consider it as a weakness. You know, as something that leaves me feeling drained, not something that energizes me. So finding your strengths is one of the best ways to improve your energy and effectiveness. And if you know your unique combination of strengths and you actually play to those strengths instead of focusing on your weaknesses, then you can dramatically amplify your impact. So don't spend too much time on your weaknesses. Um, this is you know, one of the key things that can hold you back. Um, but try to better understand your strengths and your talents. Pick the things um, the right situations um, and, and, you know, work and passions that will help you leverage your innate abilities. Okay. Now, if I think about what skills have I learned during the lockdown, um, I'll, I'll look at this in two, two distinct uh, situations. So one is the impact of COVID-19. What that's enabled us to do is to spend more time with our families, with our loved ones. We've uh, come to the realization that 
you know, the pandemic can affect anyone and everyone. Um, and it makes you think about what is truly important in life, right? It brings together more sense of community. Uh, I've thought more about, you know, helping those that are less fortunate than, than myself. And I've been uh, getting involved in more volunteering and um, giving back initiatives to the community, uh, which, you know, in turn, if more people do this, will be for the, the greater good of, of humanity. So the key skills that I would say uh, I've learned through through that impact of COVID is is really more around compassion. So being more compassionate, being tolerant. Um, so as we find that we're spending more time with uh, with our families more than than normal, it's to be tolerant, to be patient. How can we start to learn more about how others are feeling, what they're feeling? Um, you know, just understanding them more. The second area I'd turn to is looking at uh, an inclusive future for us all. So given the recent events in, in the US, it's come, it, it's really led me to a realization as well as, you know, if you look across the globe, that as a society, we need to stand up for what is right if we want to promote and ensure an inclusive future for all. So the key skills here, I'd say, I've, I've, I've taken from uh, you know from this situation is really to be em empathetic, you know, to listen, to listen to how others are feeling, what others are experiencing, but also being able to speak out and speak out for what is right. Thank you.